it's interesting that, that you've touched on a very interesting uh, point here. Uh, let's talk about fairness of, uh, of right. the, the space now. Is there fairness for all the political parties to thrive? Um, unfortunately, Shio, um, and that's a tragedy. There's no fairness, um, and I say this with deals uh, with profound sense of responsibility and, um, uh, uh, and, and, and regards. If you look at what happened in Ekiti State and look at a recently concluded election in, uh, in Imo State, um, it shows that um, there's no fairness at all. Uh, the Imo State election is uh, you know, uh, actually really uh, so shameful because we have on record that uh, small pa smaller parties, particularly my party, Young Progressive Party won um, for local government election, but from the point of the polling booth to uh, announcement, that changed. All of that is actually, you know, um, showing us that it's not the political space is not fair, but Nigerians are determined. Nigerians are seen from this uh, election that have happened that look, we have to be conscious now going to do the general election in 2019 that we must uh, fight against uh, the vision that we have now and the vision of our future. Uh, they, they, they know that it's the mother of all battles. It's a battle that will take or elect Nigerians, that will take Nigerians into a national development plan for the next 50 years or 100 years. So they are going to be conscious by, you know, uh, being very active and very, you know, uh, you know um, careful in, in voting and monitoring their, their, their votes. Indeed, 2019 will be interesting. Some people are foreseeing that it's going to be the same of the same. Some people say it's going to be the year of the underdogs. But... Do you think we need 91 political parties in Nigeria? The advent of 91 political parties is to show you how ready Nigerians are for change. As it is right now, our social welfareism status has gone down. You and I see pensioners queuing for their pension, their rightful pensions on a normal queue and dropping dead. You see how the unemployment rate in the country has shot up. Of recent, the amount of families that have jetted out of the country to date is nothing to write home about. And the economy on, is on a down low. Now, this is to show you that people are ready to do whatever. You the economy is on a down low. That Extremely on the down low. Of a, of a growth. I disagree with you. The amount of job that has been lost in the last three years in this country show will shock you. As an employer, I have 1,200 people in my you know, uh, office. I have a call center, 500 people during the day, 500 people during the night, and 200 or more as uh, supervisors and other you know, ad hoc staff. As I tell you today, I'm about to shut down. Why would you be shutting down? That's just, the economy is just not favorable. Look, look at how many companies have shut down. You and I know this. If you go by the indices of joblessness in the country, or if uh, Honorable Abike Dabiri is actually reporting to the president on the amount of families, look at how many of our, uh, our citizens have gone through this desert to Libya. Look at how many of our citizens are crossing the desert to go to Europe on a daily basis. Look at how many. Now, of recent, I read that Canada, was, as a country, was looking for immigrants to come in and help them show off, show up their uh, uh, working uh, uh, capacity. They had to issue a public statement that Nigerians are bastardizing these things. Go all over the world. Nigerians are everywhere. Just go to the airport tonight and see how people are living. So, I mean, the, 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 when you say in, in Nigeria's political history, I won't even go too far. Yes. I, I, I will take an example of two uh, presidential election cycles for you. Uh, the latest ones, uh, 2011 and 2015. In 2011, the leading political party, or uh, the the win uh, the winner of that election, which is uh, Gulag Jonathan of the PDP, had 58 percent of vote. Uh, uh, Buhari, as a candidate at the time, had 31 percent vote, right. and other political parties had five and two percent. In 2015, APC won the election at 53% of vote, PDP at 44% of vote, and the other political parties shared less than 10% of the vote. And this has been the trend, the trend of uh, how do you see this changing? Um, I have never, in my 43 years of existence in this country, I've never seen it this bad in the country.
No, but would that, uh, uh, yes, politically speaking, politically, how do you think that these figures will not repeat itself in 2019? I, I don't see it happening. Really? Like we said, it's a year of the underdog. For people like me who have the ideas, and I'm willing to get more people to help me implement the ideas as the nation's president, the next president of Nigeria, I feel that the people are tired. So it's, it's, a, it's a, I mean, if you look at what INEC has said. You know, the, because the, yes. the concept of the elitist vote and the concept of uh, the popular vote are, are still an issue. But let me quickly ask uh, Prince Adeye uh, this one. Uh, we all, on election day, it's, uh, it's always a given that we see the elites on, on their mobile phones uh, and in front of their TVs. They, in fact, they are the greatest monitors of elections, but they do that in their homes. And the people who vote, uh, perhaps uh, the popular voters, uh, they're not the, the you and I uh, who probably will sit in our houses. Uh, in 2019, uh, the trend that I mentioned here, you think it will not repeat itself? Um, show um, profoundly, uh, respectfully, I will disagree with you. Um, the people that I meet, the people that I go to, that I talk to daily, day to day um, in Abuja here, uh, actually the people that you described, the elite. Uh, they are the people who understand the bigger picture of what um, this election holds for us in 2019. They are the ones who have their wealth devalued. They are the ones who have um, lost jobs, like um, the gentleman in the studio was saying. They are the ones who don't have security uh, of their uh, property and investment any longer. They are the ones who have seen um, you know, so much you know, death and killings. And so, these people uh, are well informed and they are ready to come out in mass to make sure that uh, they elect the right uh, people and the right candidate into political offices. They have seen that taking the back seat has not helped them and uh, rather it has put the future of their children at risk. So these people are engaged, they are driven, they are motivated, yeah. they are just waiting for 2019 to come yeah. and show, you know, like uh, we, you've been saying, it's going to be the year of the underdog in 2019 because this uh, massive critical mass of uh, elitists uh, or the, the informed are uh, just waiting and ready to vote. Yeah. We hope to see uh, some level of change, but that's how far we can go, though, on the program. I must sincerely thank my panel tonight on the program. Honorable Olashi Bumi, okay, well, presidential aspirant of the ADC, and Prince Adetunji Adeyeye is uh, an aspirant of the House of Representatives uh, of the YPP. Thank you so much, gentlemen. For your time on the program. That's our show for today, everyone. Many thanks for being part of it. I'm Shion Wakimaloe. Bye bye.